to my channel where we live unapologetically, where we change lives by changing mindsets, and where we rise by lifting others. I am Odetta Rocklin Carr, head cook and bottle washer. Thank you for tuning in. And today we'll be broadcasting from Miss T, AKA Miss Sofa. Thank you again for joining. So today we're gonna talk about a touchy feely topic that most people try to avoid. And that's because people still struggle to accept the truth. So if you are someone who can't deal with candor, you may not want to continue watching because you know this video may not be for you. You may find it offensive and I don't want to offend anyone. But if you are someone who has got grit and you know someone who likes it raw unedited unfiltered someone who is able to handle the truth and find value in it and learn from it then you are in the right place so welcome to my channel <laughs> today is one that many people have concerns about many people have expressed in different ways I've often seen people online say you know what I'm launching my business and I realize that the people I expected to support me are the ones that go missing in action whether they are our friends our family our colleagues our church brothers and sisters they're the ones that are least supportive and I hear it so much. I mean, quite frankly, I haven't seen it play out too much in my personal life, but I hear it so much that I know it's a fact. So we're gonna talk about why aren't we more supportive of each other today? And we're gonna ruffle a few feathers, but that's okay. That's the kind of conversation that needs to happen here. The things that people are unwilling to talk about everywhere else because they're afraid of the consequences of ruffling feathers. And understandably so. Because we live in a society where if you offend someone or if you say something that someone finds offensive, they may ban you from their social circle. They may stop talking to you altogether, stop relating to you, and they may just start judging you. And some of us still are struggling with judgment. I've been judged, I've been banned. I don't know what I've not experienced, so I'm good. So let's get into it. So the objective of this video is to get them to support you. Whether it is you want them to buy your products, because you launched a new company or a new business, whether it's that you want them to share feedback based on their own personal experience with something that they have used or done with you, or you want them to comment on something of importance to you so others can see it and follow suit. You want them to, in my case right now, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Whatever it is, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to get it done and I promise you it will be worth it and it's very simple it's a no-brainer but some of us are afraid to tackle it so stay tuned now one of the reasons why we need to explore these topics is my philosophy on changing lives by changing mindset if we don't talk about it if we don't ventilate it if we don't explore it in details we won't be able to help people to understand the perspective or another perspective so that they can level up their mindset and as such change their lives completely so we are going to talk about the uncomfortable topics we're going to talk about things that people fear conversing on and you know you have a choice i would love if you participated but like i said if you're finding my content offensive i also understand if you want to go somewhere else until i'm doing something that's a little bit more mellow and i appreciate you coming back at that time so to ensure that you grasp the topic that we're about to discuss i'm going to share an example with you that's relatable 
and you'll get it immediately and you'll probably be able to put some comments down there of how to solve this problem of not getting support from your loved ones and as such get them to come on board with whatever it is that you're doing and lend support where it's needed. The example I'm gonna give you, I have some notes here, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm referencing. So on about two weeks ago, or probably three weeks ago, I first announced that I'm officially launching my YouTube channel. And I posted it on Instagram, where I have 22,000 plus followers. I posted it on Facebook. I have maxed out 5,000 followers on Facebook. I posted it on LinkedIn where I almost, I'm almost at 10,000 followers. So across all my social media platforms, I'm thinking I'm at, what's that? 22,000 Instagram, 10,000 LinkedIn, that's 32, 5,000 Facebook. I'm close to 30,000 followers and I have a very interactive following. Right. I have about 3,000 people in my address book and I don't put your name in my phone if I don't know you. And I've run companies that have in excess of 6,000 people. So I know people and people know me. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> wrong thought process. I was so wrong. Three weeks later, and I don't have 500 subscribers. And I'm there putting out posts, asking for support. And let me just share some statistics with you. The IG post reached 238,000 people. You heard what I just said? 238,000 people. 84% of them were between the ages of 18 and 44. Why is that point relevant? Because the reason for them not subscribing will not be that they're too old to know what YouTube is or they're too old to understand how to subscribe. That's not it. You heard the age group, 18 to 44. I'm older than this range, by the way, so you're aware. My book sold more than 500 copies in the first period when it was launched, and it was $45. Subscribing on a YouTube channel is free. You just go to the link, you click subscribe. You can subscribe to multiple channels. It's not a situation where if you subscribe to mine, you can't subscribe to 100 more. You can. So what's stopping people from lending support? We're going to explore it in grave details tonight. So now, first, let me just say thank you to all my friends and family that have been very supportive of me over the years. Whether I'm doing a new venture, I'm writing a book, whatever it is, I'm very grateful. They're the ones who are commenting and were first to subscribe. It's the same good old faithful that's always showing up. And for that, I'm grateful. But I do know that there are persons out there who, for whatever reason, they're not supportive. We're gonna explore those reasons this evening. And there's no need to have any animosity towards them. And there's no need to track them either because this is my philosophy on the matter. If you expected support from a particular place and it's not coming, you go find support elsewhere. Don't get caught up in trying to get people to do something that's against their will. You don't want that energy around you anyway. So move on, find new people to support you, but don't hold on to a grudge and don't be resentful because people grow, people learn, and the same person who doesn't follow you today will probably follow you and tell 40 people to follow you tomorrow. So don't hold on to grudges. There should be no room in your heart for any such thing, all right? So now we're gonna explore the reasons. And, you know, I gave this some thought, not, I wouldn't say I gave it deep thought, because quite frankly, I don't like to spend my time on problems. I prefer to focus my energy on solutions. But in order to find the solution sometime, we have to explore the cause. Actually, most times we have to but we don't need to stay on the cause too much so that it's starting to impact our spirit. So here's what I was able to conclude based on just an initial assessment. The first reason, and you'll realize before I get into it, 
that some of these reasons overlap with the others. Like I said, I didn't give it too much thought because I want to spend more time on the solution and less time on the problem. And these reasons are really why the thing is happening, not how to fix it. But the first one is jealousy. I find that people compare themselves with others. So you are starting a new venture, you're selling products, you're opening a store, you're opening a page on YouTube or starting your official account. And they're thinking, oh, I wonder if she's gonna do better or he's gonna do better than me. Uh, you know, she's already doing better. What more does she want? I don't need to support her. Or it may be, you know, I'm here and she's here, and if I support her, she's gonna go here, and I'm gonna struggle to catch up. Whatever the reason, we are comparing ourselves with others, and as such, it causes us to be resentful. When that happens, we are hesitant to lend support to anyone or anything, and we believe that in some instances, if we lend support, the person will leave us behind and we don't want that. By the way, I want you guys to comment below and tell me all the reasons that you believe your family, friends, and colleagues don't support your ventures, your ideas, or anything you ask them to do for that matter. So help me out with the reasons. Reason number two, this I think is a big one, and this one I think is one of the primary reasons why I don't have more subscribers. They don't think you need their help. So I have 30,000 followers online, right? And I post something. It's gonna be very easy for me to get between 1,000 and 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's their thought process. That's not reality. As I'm telling you, three weeks later, I'm still at 500, right? But that's what they're thinking. Odetta doesn't need my help. Or Angela doesn't need my help in her business. She know a lot of people. They'll support her. And they resign themselves to the fact that you don't need their help, which is an innocent situation. And as such, they don't lend assistance. So that for me is a real reason. And I've heard that said to me before by people who I know genuinely care about me. So I know it's a real factor. The third one that I wrote down is they don't know how to support us. And this one is real, right? I have friends that are 60 plus years old who don't have a YouTube account. So they can't subscribe to my channel or they don't know how to. There are people, for example, if your business is online and they don't venture online, for whatever reason, they're hesitant. They want to support you, but they don't know how to support you. So I think that's a relatively substantial reason in many cases, but it's, I don't think most of the population will fall into that bracket, but it is a reason. Let me know what you think about that one below. The next one I wrote down is they don't want to see you do better than them. And many of you will just write envy, bad mind, grudgeful, and all the negative comments. And, you know, I'm not, I, I don't think of people that way, right? I believe if someone is envious of me, it's admiration. I know I sound conceited, but think about it. Why do people have time to follow you up, to stay on your page, if they are envious of you? I mean, I, I think they're actual fans. They just have not realized it yet. But let's not go too much into that. We leave that one for another video. But they really don't want you to excel if they are not excelling. And you may call it different names, but it's real. And you do have some people out there. But it's okay. It's okay if someone is envious of you, if they are bad mind, as many people say. You know why it's not a problem? Because people don't envy people who are not doing well. They don't judge people who are not making a difference. And they don't hate people who are not excelling. Hate, judgment, and envy are usually an indication that you're doing very well for yourself. Think about it. The person out there who is struggling to make ends meet. The person who is having it 
difficult to put food on the table. The person who is on their last, you think anybody's envying them? They're more sympathetic to their cause. When you are excelling and doing well, that's when you face envy. So use it as an indication of success. And that way I think you'll digest it a little bit more. I don't digest hate, envy, or judgment as a negative thing. I actually think of it as fuel and confirmation that I'm on the right path. You should probably do the same. See, what else do I have on my list here? They're too busy to support you. They don't have the time. They don't make the time to support you. They can't bother to come on your page to buy your products or to comment on a product that they have used or they can't take the time to go over to YouTube to subscribe to your channel. Whatever it is, time becomes a limitation. But it's not that they don't have the time, it's that they don't make the time because they don't think you're a priority. People do what they think is important. Let me give you an example just to confirm my point on procrastination and them not having time to help you. If you say to that same person, Listen, family, friend, colleague, whoever they are, I left $2 million on the top of Blue Mountain, and that's $2 million US dollars on the top of Blue Mountain. If you can get to it, it's yours. They're going to make time to get to it. People prioritize what they think is important. Procrastination is a choice. It's not an outcome. So let's stop saying people are busy. People don't have time. They don't want to have time. And let's accept it for what it is. Your family and friends don't have any time for you because you are not a priority. Or what you're asking them to do is not a priority. Okay? Let's accept it for what it is because the faster we accept it, the better we find a solution for it. The next one I have on my list is that they really don't find you interesting. And this one may hurt your feelings, I know. But... I know that there are people out there who don't find me interesting enough to go to YouTube to subscribe to my channel. There are people out there who don't find the products that you're offering or selling them interesting enough to buy it. You have to accept that reality. And this is why it's important to pivot because if you get caught up on who don't like you and that becomes your focus, then you lose sight of all the other people out there who actually like your content and who want to be in your space. The next reason, and this one, brace yourself for it, is your family and friends don't really like you. They pretend to because they have ulterior motives, whether they want to get close to you, to get something from you, or they want to say they know you, whatever the reason, deep down, they're not fond of you. And it's a real fact. And because they're not fond of you, it's gonna be difficult for them to subscribe to you, whether it's your business, your products, whatever it is, they're gonna find it challenging. Now they won't come out and say it because they're gonna pretend that they're supporting, but they really aren't. So just to give you an example, to confirm the point I'm trying to make, I was recently at a particular place and I asked persons there to subscribe to me and they did. And I watched someone actually unsubscribe after they subscribed when they didn't think I was looking. So they did it because I asked, but because deep down they didn't really want to support me, they unsubscribed. And that's okay. Remember, no resentment, no grudge. That same person may turn around and become your biggest supporter. They have their reasons why they can't support you right now. And it may be eating them up inside. Keep your conscience free and you will be okay. So the last one I have on my list is that people don't support you because they're nosy. And this one I have to explain because you're wondering, if they're nosy, they would probably come and find out what's happening at your business place, come and see what products you're selling, or come in to subscribe to my YouTube channel because they want to see what's going on. No, it's actually the reverse. So they're nosy in that they want to see what is happening, so they will watch your content, but they will not subscribe because they don't want to support you, but they can't help but see you. 
These are the people who will be unkind to you on your page, but won't stop following you for whatever reason. And that is okay as well, because you are having an impact on them, whether you want to believe it or not. So in that regard, take the high road. Always try to be respectful when they express hate at you. Because remember what I said earlier, the person who is your foe today may be your fan tomorrow. So that's all I had on my list as it pertains to reasons why our family and friends don't support us in anything that we're doing. Please remember to comment below with any other reasons that you could think of or you can elaborate on some of the ones that I mentioned and give me your perspective because I will be reading every single comment and I will be responding in some way, shape or form. So please comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So before we talk about how we can get our family, friends and relatives to be supportive of us, I want you to take a moment to do some deep introspection. Are you supportive of your friends, family, colleague? Because if you are not supportive, you should not expect support. I have done my own introspection and I know I can do better as it pertains to making time to support my friends and family. And I'm working on it and it's a work in progress. But I realize the errors in my ways and I am addressing it. Are you addressing yours? Remember, you know, we rise by lifting others. So you can't expect others to help you when you are not helping them. So let's fix that. Now, from my perspective, if I were to rate my level of support on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being exceptionally supportive, I would give myself a seven. I have opportunities around making time to be supportive. So I want to be supportive. I'm excited about my friend's ventures. I am on board with it, but I just don't make the time to get it done. So that's what I'm working on. On the flip side, however, I believe I'm relatively supportive. I mean, I am gonna you know, show you the amount of books I have as an author. I have been supporting Jamaican authors for a very long time. As it pertains to clothing, I love buying Jamaican. I don't always buy Jamaican, but I love buying Jamaican. And as a matter of fact, as it pertains to anything that I can get my hands on. So I think from that perspective, I'm very supportive, but I definitely have room to grow. So I give myself a seven out of 10 because of those other things. But the three that I'm short on, is because I need to make more time. I need to stop procrastinating and I just need to get it done as it pertains to supporting some of my friends and family. So that's my action item from this session. Now on the matter of support, I want to qualify some of the things I've just shared. My YouTube situation of people not subscribing to my channel is frivolous compared to some of the bigger issues out there. There are people out there who want your support to put food on the table. There are people out there who want your support to stay alive. So don't allow my YouTube subscriber situation to belittle the point I'm trying to share here. It's about being more supportive of each other in general. So that's really what I want you to take away from here tonight. And not too much of my YouTube situation, although I'm very serious about that because it's impeding a big goal that I have. Like I said, I haven't shared it with you yet. So I'm very serious, but there are bigger issues out there that I'm hoping you will be able to help with because this video resonates with you. Now we're at that place where we need to solve the problem at hand. How do we get our family, our friends, and our relatives to be more supportive of us? How do we get them to buy our products? How do we get them to share the experiences so that more people will come on board? How do we get them to subscribe to our YouTube channel? How do we get them to comment on something that's important to us to encourage others to do the same? You know what it is? It's very simple. We ask them. 
ask them to lend support. When I realized after posting my YouTube official account creation and that I needed subscribers, and I saw that I only had 200 subscribers after one week, I took matters into my own hands. And what I did was I went to my address book in my phone and I WhatsApped, I personalized these WhatsApp messages. So I said, Sandy or Odetta or Paula or Carlene, I have just launched my YouTube channel. I would love your support. Please click on this link to subscribe. When I see persons I know on the road and I run into them and I said, hi, how you doing? And we, you know, we chit chat, we check up on each other, make sure we're okay. I say, you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? In English, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? What are you waiting on? Come man, let's go on YouTube and get it done right now. And I stand there and police the assignment to make sure they're subscribing. Now back to the personalized WhatsApp messages that I sent. So I sent out about 100 messages and about 95 persons subscribed to my channel shortly afterwards. So I was grateful. That conversion is 95%. I asked and it happened. 95% conversion. Why don't we ask people for what we want? because of our pride and our ego. But in my book, No Regrets, Just Lessons, I say it loud and clear that I never allow my pride or my ego to get in the way of my goals. Now let's talk about why we don't ask. We don't ask because we are afraid of the response, but think about it. There can only be one of two responses. It's either, yes, I'm going to support you, or no, I'm not going to. Or yes, and they support you, but then they don't when you're not looking, or they don't continue to after you have left. But it's okay. They can't beat you. They can't, they may cuss you out, but they can't beat you. They usually can't do anything to hurt you. So why are we so afraid to ask for what it is that we want? Because of our useless pride and our big ego. It's time to start asking. If you opened your business and you want your friends to support you, ask them to come, tell them a time when you'll be there and remind them to come and support you. You know why we're not asking? because we ourselves are caught up in our own feelings. We're thinking and making up reasons for our friends not to support us. We're saying things like, that's because they have a bad mind, them too bad mind. And you know, them, them full up of too much hate and resentment. And we're coming up with all the excuses as to why they don't support us instead of just asking them, why not just ask? and you'll get the answer. And it may not be the truth, but at least that's now behind you and you can move on to find people who are willing to support you and no longer spend your time wondering why those who should support you are not supporting you. That's a waste of time in my opinion. Now, because you ask them to support you and they don't want to, they might start avoiding you. But don't look at it negatively because they're doing you a favor. You can do without people like that. The people who don't have the courage to tell you, no, I don't want to support you, Odetta, because I'm not interested in your content. Or no, I don't want to support you, Angela, because I don't like the type of clothes that you sell. Or Cindy, the shoes them not look good. I don't want to support you. I prefer that every day of the week. But some people will just avoid you because they don't know how to say no. They just don't have the courage to tell you no. Don't be angry at them. Don't be resentful because they may turn around and be your biggest supporter later on. So what I want you to leave here with is the fact that you need to drop your foolish pride and submerge your big ego and start asking for what it is that you want. 
And if you are not getting support from those that you're asking, find some new people to ask. There's always somebody out there willing to fly your flag. Go and find them. Get them to fly your flag and support you. And remember that they supported you when no one else did. Whenever you get to where it is that you're going, it's important for you to remember that. And also remember to be supportive yourself because it's unfair to expect support from others and not lend support to everyone you are able to. So now that we have identified the primary reason to get people to support you, it's going to require a mindset shift. It's going to require you to build more confidence, possibly, to be bolder, to be more assertive for you to get this done. But I have every confidence that you have it in you to get what you want out of this life. Because when you're pursuing your greatness, or you're chasing those big goals, you're gonna have to do what no one is willing to do. You're gonna have to go where no one else have gone. And you're gonna have to be who no one else has been. So in closing, ask for what you want. Don't be shy. Don't allow your pride to get in the way. Don't allow your ego to stop you from pursuing your big dreams and goals. Ask for it. Remember the conversion rate? I asked 100 persons, 97 subscribed. If your conversion rate is even 30%, which means for every 100 persons you ask to buy your products, to subscribe, to support your business, 30% of them do so, it's 30% more than what you had before you asked. Axe.